Burr. It's cold up here in the North Pole, but thank you, Santa. I'm thrilled to be here for KringleCon 3. Also, thank you for sending that reindeer-powered rideshare to uh, get me up here to the North Pole. And today, I'm going to be speaking about Open S3 buckets. Still a problem in 2020. My name is Joshua Wright. I am a senior instructor for the SANS Institute. I'm also the author of SANS Security 504, and I'm a technical director for CounterHack, working alongside this amazing team here, doing penetration testing work, but also putting all the energy we have into developing the amazing Holiday Hack Challenge every year. So thank you to all of the amazing people on the CounterHack team, and I'm always thrilled to have the chance to uh, work with all these amazing folks. So uh, I'm going to be talking about an, a problem that we call insecure buckets, which is something that I would not have uh, predicted that we'd still need to talk about in uh, 2020. Yet here we are, and it seems like on an almost weekly basis, we see a new major breach happen where significant information is discovered publicly available on the internet in open and insecure Amazon S3 buckets. And this has affected all sorts of different verticals, not just uh, finance, uh, but education, uh, manufacturing, healthcare, insurance industry, and, and many other places besides. Now, these buckets, these S3 buckets, are just fundamentally a cloud storage mechanism. It's Amazon's simple storage service, which we refer to as S3, and it's basically just an object storage mechanism. They're designed to store data. It's similar in nature to having files that are stored on your local file system, and they can be used to store resources for public or for private use. Now, early on, when Amazon came out with S3 and people would create these S3 buckets for storage, they would default to public access. So if you didn't make any changes to improve the security of your bucket, the data would just be publicly accessible. Now, Amazon changed that setting a long time ago, yet we still have a lot of data that gets disclosed publicly as people either kind of stumble across or intentionally seek out and try to find these public buckets. Now, Amazon is doing what it can to try to make it so that these buckets are not publicly shared or at least uh, are easily recognizable when they are publicly shared, yet we still see lots of these public buckets disclosing really sensitive information. As an admin, if you go to the uh, Amazon S3 console page and you go to the uh, uh, bucket creation page, you can list and enumerate all of the buckets that you've created. And here we can see that I have a bucket cr called Josh's Private Stuff. And you can see on the right hand side here that is even clearly labeled as public. Now, that's a pretty strong indicator that any data that's in that bucket should not be sensitive because it is public and accessible. Yet, many organizations either aren't looking or don't understand the implications of having a public bucket resource like this. And what we're seeing is other people discover them, they enumerate the data and the files in those uh, bucket resources, and then are often stumbling across sensitive or very damaging types of information for the target organization or their customers. Now, every one of these buckets has what's called a bucket identifier, and that identifier is what we call an Amazon resource name or an ARN. Here we can see the Amazon resource name is ARN AWS S3, couple of colons, and then whatever that bucket ID or that bucket name is. Now, every bucket that exists in Amazon S3 has a bucket name. And the bucket name is chosen by the user creating the bucket, and it must be globally unique. So if you add a bucket, you can supply a name, but if you supply a name such as Oracle, for example, that's already taken, and you're going to have to choose a different name. Now, whenever these buckets are created, we can access them over several protocols, but one of the common ways that people access these buckets is over HTTP or, or HTTPS, where the URL, https colon slash slash, s3.amazonaws.com 
slash, and then the name of the bucket itself, Josh's private stuff or whatever that bucket name, will actually allow the user to access those resources. Now, in this case, we've got a public bucket, Josh's private stuff, and if you browse to the URL, s3 amazon aws.com slash josh's private stuff you'll be able to access the resource or the resources in that bucket now if this is a, a non-us specific region sometimes we see s3 region codes that are used for region specific locales but amazon will also redirect those buckets to those region specific locales as well this configuration detail is what we need to understand before we start talking about how to find these Amazon buckets, if they're secured or they're insecure, and the nature of the data that's stored in these buckets. s3.amazonaws.com slash and then that bucket name that we're looking for. Now, it turns out that there are a lot of open buckets out there on the internet. The interesting part for us is identifying them and figuring out if they distribute sensitive information. So what we're gonna talk about next is how do we do that? How do we find those resources and how do we retrieve that information? Well, there's several tools that we can use for this. Um, Robin Wood, uh, who is a friend of mine and has done a lot of amazing work for the information security community, he wrote an early term called Bucket Find, an early tool called Bucket Finder. Bucket Finder is a Ruby script that takes a word list of terms and uses every one of those word list of terms to try to see if that term is matching an ARN, an Amazon resource name, to identify an S3 bucket. So you can see here in my word list, I did a cat word list, and I've got a couple of lines here. Normally these files would be quite long, but here we just have a couple of lines. Private dash Kringlecon, Josh's private stuff, and Oracle. To use Bucket Finder, we just run the bucketfinder.rb script, and then we specify whatever that word list file is. And what Bucket Finder will do is go to s3.amazonaws.com slash, and then every one of those words in the word list. Now, I've also added the dash dash download argument, which you would probably not do when you're just running this tool to scan through a large list of files, but you would use that if you want to retrieve everything in a given bucket. That's because in this process, you may find lots of buckets that are public, but you might not want to download everything from all those buckets. You want to be, might want to be a little bit more choosy. But here we specify dash dash download, and the first entry we can see, the bucket does not exist. Private dash Kringlecon is not a bucket. The bucket Josh's private stuff does exist, and what Bucket Finder will do is enumerate all the files and then download the file from that bucket. Now the third bucket, Oracle, also exists, but is not a public bucket. It's a private bucket, so our access is denied. Now, just using this tool, we can come up with our own word list and try to find those unprotected buckets and then retrieve the information from those uh, bucket resources. Now, there are also other cloud resources to find this as well. Uh, Grey Hat Warfare at buckets.greyhatwarfare.com has a resource that allows us to search from known public buckets. What they do at Grey Hat Warfare is that they're constantly kind of refining their own word list, constantly scanning for uh, new buckets that are created, and then indexing and retrieving information about those resources so that they're easy to find. Now, this is a free resource, but it is also a commercial resource, and I personally have had difficulty getting this to work well for me. This is a nice resource for a quick search, but it's not comprehensive and it only gives you incomplete results if you're not a paid user. As a free user, you're only limited to searching a couple thousand of the millions of files that have been indexed with this tool. So while this can be useful, it's mostly going to be useful for paid accounts, not for free access. Now you might ask, how do I find buckets that people haven't found before? A lot of people have run Bucket Finder using their own word lists. A lot of people use the Gray Hat Warfare tool to be able to find bucket resources as well. How do I find things that other people haven't yet found? 
New Bucket Discovery is about creativity and also staying current. New buckets are being created all the time. Somebody that scanned for buckets yesterday won't find something that was created as a new bucket today. So keeping on top of these tools, but I think even more importantly is about applying your own creativity. So look at this for an example. A bucket with the ARN, ARN AWS S3 Microsoft, probably won't uncover a public bucket. If you search for a bucket called Microsoft, that bucket probably exists, I'm pretty sure it does, and it's going to be a private bucket that you're not going to be able to access. But how about a different name? Something like msdev-east-cortana2020. That might identify a bucket that nobody has found before. So a lot of bucket discovery comes down to you using your creativity and coming up with a word list that will find things that nobody has found before. You might start with a basic word list, just Google for S3 bucket word list, and there's many to get started with, and then add suffixes and prefixes to all those words. For a specific company that you might be targeting in a pen test or some kind of an assessment, add the company name or an abbreviation or the stock ticker quote, or maybe specific products or versions of products or abbreviations for products. Consider adding region-specific information, such as countries, country abbreviation, provinces, states, cities, things like that. Also, don't forget just to look for basic names. If you have a product, let's say a new Soho router or some kind of a device, maybe it's the product name itself that will reveal a bucket and maybe just nobody's found it yet. The process of identifying new buckets is doing it often, try to find buckets that may have been created recently, but also being creative in the selection of the word list that you're using to identify those buckets as well. Now, we've been talking about S3 buckets, which is Amazon specific, but this is not an Amazon specific problem. For Microsoft Azure Cloud, we have Azure Blobs, and we've even seen recent vulnerabilities where Azure Blobs expose lots of public information, such as this case where automatic uh, license plate numbers and how they do image recognition for the company Tesco was recently disclosed. Now, I've been speaking with Robin Wood, his handle on Twitter is at DigiNinja, and uh, we've been talking about how we can discover these Azure Blobs using automated scanning tools. To the best of my knowledge, there isn't a simple tool like Bucket Finder that Robin created for S3 buckets, but hopefully Robin will be able to come up with another tool for us in the future that can also do this kind of scanning for Azure Blob data as well. I think it's also interesting that you can even make money finding insecure S3 buckets. And if you go to uh, websites like uh, bug bounty programs at hackerone.com slash hacktivity, you can search for S3 or uh, Amazon or Azure Blob or just the keyword bucket. And you can see where bounties have been paid out for the discovery of insecure S3 buckets in the past. This is an article I found where somebody claims to have gotten $1,500 and it just took this person 15 minutes to find an insecure Amazon S3 bucket. So this can also be a way to maybe even pick up some side cash doing this kind of analysis as well. Now, let's talk about some defenses. What can we do? Well, I'm a big fan of active defense through offense, using tools like Bucket Finder to scan your own organization and look for buckets that might match what's going on in your company before an attacker can find them. Now, if you also have access to logging resources in your company, that can be another really valuable source of information. So if you have access to DNS server name lookups within your organization, or proxy logs, or endpoint detection and response reports on host systems that might indicate what websites people are browsing to, or visiting, or resolving with DNS, I would look through all of those for s3.amazonaws.com just to try to identify bucket names. Then, with a list of those bucket names, test them yourself. Are they public? Do they disclose sensitive information? And if they do, then ask yourself, well, who controls this bucket? And if you can identify that, 
ask yourself, is there a mechanism to report these vulnerabilities either directly to the person that is uh, controlling the bucket or the company controlling the bucket or through some kind of a bug bounty program? Again, be creative in your word list generation. Use what you can learn from monitoring your own organization and try to mutate those bucket names to see if you can find other things that maybe nobody else has found yet. For your own organization, you should consider setting and enforcing policies where if you are using S3 buckets, they require authenticated access. And furthermore, they do not disclose personally identifiable information. You should also audit your organization in how S3 buckets may be used or even third-party comparable services such as Azure Blobs. And not just for your organization, but what are your partner organizations doing with your data as well? Remember, a lot of S3 breaches are not from the main organization, but from partner organizations with your data. I hope this was a useful look and a quick introduction for you to be able to look at some of the vulnerabilities and some of the issues associated with S3 buckets. I encourage you to spend some time looking at tools like Bucket Finder, being creative in your word list generation, and spend some time trying to find some of those exposed and public S3 buckets out on the internet. Again, my name is Joshua Wright, and I thank you for coming to KringleCon. Ho, 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 ho.